it's fall, y'all. Hey guys, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because it's sweater weather. It's fall. And to celebrate, we're going to be making some easy fall treats. If you like these baking videos, give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. We're gonna be making these delicious pumpkin rolls. They're perfect for fall and perfect for Thanksgiving. These pumpkin cookies, they're gonna look like the Pillsbury image cookies from the store, but I'm gonna show you how to make them at home. And then these adorable chocolate acorn donuts. They're bite sized and they're super easy to assemble. All right, now without further ado, let's get started. The first recipe that we're making are these delicious pumpkin dinner rolls. This recipe is from my second cookbook, Baking All Year Round. I'll put a link down below. If you guys do not have a copy yet, go check it out. I have some signed copies left. We've sold out like four times, but I just checked the site. We have some back in stock now. This cookbook has treats for every occasion during the year, and these are just perfect for Thanksgiving. I love them. The first thing we need to do to make these dinner rolls because we're making them from scratch is to activate our yeast. To activate the yeast, we're gonna pour warm milk, the yeast, sugar, and two tablespoons of flour. And just a pro tip is you just don't want the milk to be over 120 degrees or that's gonna kill the yeast. After you've whisked together all of these ingredients, we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes. Next, we're gonna add pumpkin puree and two whole eggs, the yolk and the whites. Whisk together one more time. Oh, look at that beautiful color. Now add salt and softened butter. Butter that's at room temperature. You don't want to pull it right out of the refrigerator and have it be cold, and you don't want it to be melted and liquidy. You really want soft butter. I have tried mixing it right out of the fridge. Don't do it, disaster. And I've tried melted butter. Don't do it, it's food science. All right, get in there. Whisk together once again. I know what some of you may be wondering, Ro, why are you hand mixing in a stand mixer? Well, it's just because I have my dough hook ready to go and the dough hook doesn't do a great job of the whisking and I could switch the hooks, but I just figured just grab a whisk, do it by hand, and then when we add our flour, I'll be using the dough hook. I'm doing me, you guys could do you, but this is how I like to do it. Now, if you're looking in the bowl and you see little chunks of butter, it looks a little cottage cheesy, that's fine. Time to use the dough hook. I'll be putting all of the ingredients and their measurements down below in the description, so if you want to follow along at home, you can. But I like to add this slowly so you don't get a big poof dust cloud, and the dough can more evenly incorporate all the flour. Just keep mixing when the dough is ready. It's going to start pulling away from the sides of the bowl. As you can see, the dough is ready. Over here, I've got a large clean bowl that we're going to prep with a little bit of olive oil. Whoop. Pour a little in there, and you're just gonna spread it around. I just use a clean little paper towel or whatever you have around. This is usually how I coat pans, too. And then we're gonna set this off to the side. Take a little flour, sprinkle it on top of the work surface in front of you so that the dough won't stick. And we're just gonna knead it by hand. And if you've never kneaded before, it's really easy. Just gonna use this part of your hand, the bottom part, and we're gonna push forward, pull back, and turn. Push pull, turn. You're gonna keep doing this till you want your dough to be tacky but not sticky. We're almost there. Just a couple minutes of kneading by hand and then we'll be good to go. This is my favorite thing in the world. I love getting messy. I love getting my hands in there. Okay, okay this is looking good. It's still tacky but not sticky. And when you take your finger and you press in, boop, you'll want it to boop, fill out again. That's when you know it's ready. Okay, now you're gonna take your dough, place it into the bowl that we've prepped with oil. You don't just put it in here, you're gonna roll it around just a little bit so that all sides of the dough have a little bit of oil. Now we're gonna let our dough rest and rise. This takes about one to two hours. It really depends on a lot of things. The temperature in your kitchen, the moisture in the air. There's a lot of things here, but you're just gonna let it sit until it's doubled in size. And I like to cover it with a little clean towel like this, boop. We'll just put our dough to sleep and we'll wait a couple hours. Let's check on our dough. Oh, perfect. Once it's doubled in size, we're gonna cut it into 15 sections and roll into balls. And over here, I've got a little bit of food safe plastic wrap. I don't want my balls to dry out, so I'm gonna stick them under here to kind of keep the moisture. Just do a plot for me, plop. 
I love it. So I got a little bench scraper and I'm gonna cut it into 15 sections. I'm just gonna eyeball it. You can use a scale if you want to be more perfect. Then we're just gonna cut all the way through like that and roll into a ball. Just keep doing this and make a bunch of balls. We've divided the dough, rolled them into little balls over here, and now we're gonna turn these cute little balls into cute little pumpkins. I've done one over here on the baking sheet. You wanna have ready a baking sheet lined with a piece of parchment paper, and we've sprayed a little bit so that it won't stick. And in front of me, I have a little ruler, so you can use one of these. You're gonna roll out each ball to be about 16 inches long. And for this step, you don't wanna use any flour. The stickiness really helps and it's tacky, but it's not going to stick to your counter. Now we're gonna do a loop like so. And you want about five inches on this side and about two inches on this side. And you're gonna take the longer, the five inch side and just start to wrap it around like so. Wrap, 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 or wrap, wrap, or wrap, wrap. Then when it runs out, you're gonna flip it upside down and continue to wrap, and then connect these two in the back, give it a pinch, flip it over, and there you go, how cute. Look at that, little pumpkin in waiting. Now you're gonna do this to the rest of your balls of dough. the rolls are rolled. They look like little pumpkins. They are almost ready to pop in the oven. I've got the oven heating right now, but before they go in, we're gonna paint a little bit of egg wash on the tops. So this time, we've just got a whisked egg and a little bit of salt. And then you just paint the egg wash over the top. It's gonna help give these rolls a beautiful golden color when they bake and they come out of the oven. Our rolls are ready to go in the oven. You wanna heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. You'll know they're ready when the tops start to turn a light golden brown. Our rolls have baked. I just took them out of the oven and while they're still warm, we're gonna be adding a little pecan in the center of the roll to look like a pumpkin stem. I have a whole bowl of them here, so you're just gonna take these nuts and put in each little pumpkin roll. Dude, look how cute! These are adorable. After you've placed a pecan in the center of each roll, we're just gonna let them cool for another five minutes on the tray, and then they're ready to serve. And ta-da, there you have it, pumpkin dinner rolls. I just love dinner rolls. There's something about them, they're so comforting. They're soft and golden and delicious. They're perfect for Thanksgiving. I think I'm gonna be making these for Thanksgiving this year, and they're just perfect for fall. So give them a try, they're super adorable. Mm. Next thing that we're gonna be making are these quick and easy chocolate acorn donuts. They're super cute. This treat we're about to make is probably the easiest, fastest little sweet dessert ever. I really like it because there's no baking involved. This treat is basically a little assembly and decorating. The four things that you'll need to make these, donut holes. You can get them anywhere at their grocery store pre-made or you can go to Krispy Kreme, whatever your favorite one is, get them. Some dark chocolate melts, then some chocolate sprinkles and some pretzel sticks which I've broken about in half. And that is all you need, you guys. The first thing that we're gonna do is melt our chocolate. Typically with chocolate, you wanna pop it in the microwave for about 10 to 30 seconds, mix it up a little bit, and then pop it in again. You don't wanna burn your chocolate, so I heat up in increments. So just keep your eye on it, and as soon as it's melted, we're ready to go. <gasps> Look at that, our chocolate is melted, and now let's make these happen. Okay, so pick up a little donut hole, and you're gonna dip it in a little less than halfway, like that, and then to get the excess chocolate to drip off, give it a little jiggle, or you can wipe it on the side of the bowl, that's fine too. Look how cute. Then you're gonna roll it in the sprinkles, give it a little texture. Last but not least, place a little pretzel right on top in the middle. Just a little bit. And look at that, adorable and bite size. You don't need serving utensils, you don't need plates, you can just grab and go. So we're gonna keep doing this to the rest of these adorable little donut holes and then let them sit for 10 minutes and then they're ready to enjoy. And ta 
ta-da, there you have it. Chocolate acorn donuts, the easiest treat to ever make. Just a little donut hole with some chocolate and chocolate sprinkles and a little pretzel. The added chocolate and sprinkles and the salted pretzel stick just adds that little crunch, a little texture to this yummy soft donut. And there's a little bit of salt in the pretzel. So it's a little bit of salt with all the sweet. I can't tell you how much they complement each other in taste and flavor. And with the extra texture, it just makes this treat amazing. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. I was gonna make another recipe, but now I'm just gonna go watch movies and eat these, bye. Next dessert that we're gonna be making is a homemade pumpkin cookie that looks just like the ones from the store from Pillsbury, those cute little image cookies. First up to making our cookies is making the dough. In front of me, I have all the ingredients to make a delicious, simple sugar cookie recipe. The first step is creaming together our butter and sugar. We're just gonna mix together for a couple minutes, not until light and fluffy, but just till it's incorporated. Once those are mixed together, you're gonna add one egg, a little bit of salt, salty, salty. A little bit of vanilla extract. Just mix till well combined. Now on a low speed, while it's mixing, we're gonna slowly add our flour, little bit by little bit, so that we don't get a big dust cloud. Once your dough is ready, put it on the counter. I've shaped it into a disc and we're gonna divide it into three parts. So I used a knife to mark it, but half of the dough we're gonna set aside. One sixteenth, boom is going to be colored green. So I'm gonna put this over here in the bowl and then the rest we're gonna dye orange. And I'm gonna put this back in the stand mixer because it just makes it a little bit easier to incorporate the color. What do I have? Pumpkin spice. We're gonna add it to the pumpkin part of the cookie. For our orange dough, I'm gonna add some orange food coloring. Mix together until all the dough is colored evenly. Orange dough is ready, we've got a regular dough and then for the stems, I'm just gonna add a couple drops of green and using a spoon, just gonna mix these together because it's such a small amount. I'm using a spoon because I'm trying not to dye my fingers. We've got the three colors of dough. We've got orange, the regular, and a little bit of green. Now I'm gonna clean up the station and we can get to shaping. We're gonna start by shaping our orange dough, which is gonna be our pumpkin. We're basically making a pumpkin log. So I have the dough in front of me. It's sitting on top of some food safe plastic wrap on a baking sheet. And we're doing this so that once we get the correct shape, that we aren't picking up the dough, moving it, and distorting the shape. We can just pick this up and put it in the fridge to chill. Now, I'm gonna roll this out to be about 10 inches. So we're gonna start rolling. We want a little log with flat ends because we want more cookie. We don't want to waste any dough. I don't want to brag, but this is perfect. Perfectly 10 inches. Now you're going to take a long popsicle stick and we're going to press down in the center at the top. And this is going to create a little groove, a little crevice where we're going to put our pumpkin stem into later. Boop. All right, then take it out. Our orange dough is looking good. I'm gonna shape the green dough, the little stem, and then we'll pop them in the fridge together. So I've rolled it out into a little teeny log, 10 inches as well. And to shape this, it's really easy. You just use your pointer finger and your thumb, and you're just gonna pinch, and it's gonna kind of make a triangle shape. The finished stem will be about half an inch tall. You don't need to wrap it up tight. I'm just gonna lightly cover it when we put it in the fridge to keep it fresh. Now I'm gonna pop this tray in the fridge to chill for about one hour. The dough has chilled, just popped it out of the fridge, and now we're gonna assemble the pumpkin. Over here, I've got a little bit of egg white in this bowl with a little baking brush, and I'm just gonna dip my brush in here. I'm gonna paint on the top of our pumpkin in that little groove, and this is gonna act as glue. Now take your stem, and the pointy part is going to go down. So as soon as you get it secure in place, we're gonna pop this in the freezer. Not for very long, we're just gonna keep it in the freezer for it to set like this, while we do the next step. While the pumpkin dough is in the freezer, we're gonna work with our regular sugar cookie dough. So what I've done is I took off about a golf ball size of dough. We're gonna set this off to the side. We're gonna use this later, so boop. 
I have a piece of plastic wrap that is underneath the dough and then I folded it on top just so it won't stick. It's gonna be very smooth. And now we're gonna roll it out to be 10 inches again, but this time by five inches, so 10 by five. Using my hands, I'm gonna shape the dough to be a little bit more rectangular. Over here, I have rolled the golf ball of dough that we set off to the side into two logs, and then we took the pumpkin out of the freezer. Again, we're gonna be using egg white to stick the doughs together. And this is to fill in that space. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So either way you do this is fine. You can paint egg white on here, roll it together, but you just wanna cover this whole thing with egg white. So you can either paint like this or you can paint the dough here. Place it down. You just want the ends to line up. Taking a little bit more egg white with our brush and now I'm painting this side. Now we're gonna roll this up like a little sushi. It's slimy, it's covered in egg whites. Here is where the plastic wrap really comes in handy. And use that to roll. Oh, this is great. Once you've rolled together, now I'm gonna transfer this to my baking sheet and let this sit in the fridge for about one hour to chill again. You want to chill them again because when you cut the dough, you don't want them to change shape. In the fridge we go. Just took the cookie log out of the fridge and you wanna cut these slices quickly. You don't want your dough to get warm. We're gonna cut each slice about a quarter inch thick. That's what we want for our cookies. And this is one of the most exciting parts. I love this. Oh, Almost better than eating them is seeing the fun little design on the inside. Oh, they're so cute! I'm dead! I love them! Look how cute! They're adorable! All these cookies we're gonna split between two baking sheets because they do spread a little bit and I don't want to mess up my cute little cookies. Look at how cute these are. They haven't even baked yet, and I'm so excited. They're adorable. Now it's time to bake. Heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake for about 10 to 12 minutes. Just keep your eye on them. You don't want them to turn too golden brown or burned because these are too cute to burn. We can't waste a cookie here. And da da! There you have it. Here's the pumpkin sugar cookies that we've made today with a little extra pumpkin spice in the middle. And they are so cute, you guys. They look just like the ones from the store, but better. They're made at home from scratch. And does the store have a little hint of pumpkin spice in their pumpkin? I don't think so. Oh my gosh. After all that work, let's take a little bite. Mmm, perfect. All right, that does it for the video. I hope you enjoyed these three easy fall time treats. We made pumpkin dinner rolls. Yum, 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 yum. Perfect for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna be making them this year with Thanksgiving. Then our pumpkin sugar cookies that look just like the ones from the store. And I think better, because they've got a little pumpkin spice inside. And last but not least, these adorable chocolate acorn donuts, which are delicious and probably the easiest, fastest treat that you can make for fall. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the recipes and this video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. All right, thanks again for watching, you guys. Bye-bye. If you'd like to watch any more videos, you can click over here or over here. Ah, you can come with me. Oh. You too. And you, I'm saving you for dinner. I'll be back. <laughs>